Can you mix lithium phosphate iron batteries in between brands? The short answer is yes, but, and this but is important, it's not theoretical, I'm talking from experience. Let me show you what's going on with mine. That's why I said but, because it's a little bit more complicated. So these batteries are hooked up in 2S, 2P. These are hooked up together in series, 24 volt. These are hooked up in series, 24 volt, and they are hooked up in parallel, and they're fitting a grid tie inverter. They work. But here's the catch. So I'll try to make the video short, but it has a lot of information in it. I'm sorry if I'm gonna bore you a little bit, but you have to know the details because otherwise there's no point. So when you choose your solar system and you choose to have a 48 volt, a 24 volt, a 36 volt or a 12 volt, it's important to start right. Ideally, if you know all that stuff, then you will be able to plan accordingly. These batteries, are made in 12 volt, in 24 volt, in 36 volt, in 48 volt. And they have a BMS, it's a battery management system that can control all the cells. This one has four cells in it. Each one is like three volts. That's why it makes it a 12 volt. If you hook them up in series, most of the BMSs cannot talk to each other even from the same brand. Therefore, the batteries that are hooked up in series will charge and discharge at slightly different amps even though they're the same brand. Building your system right is important. Get a 24 volt if you have a 24 volt system. Get a 48 volt if you have a 48 volt system and so and so. That's the best advice that I could give. But what if you made a mistake or you just have different kind of batteries or you change your mind? Well, then you're stuck with 12 volt battery systems and you could hook them up in series and you could make a 24 volt system, which happened over here. I have exactly the same brand, two of the batteries, now, when I charge them and discharge them, you could see a slight charge and discharge via one to the other, about 5% or by 5 amp hours, because it's 100 amp hours, 100%, and therefore you could switch percentages in amp hours easily to understand the math. So they start equal, I equalize them, and then one starts to discharge faster and the other one starts to discharge slower, and then they build a little bit of a difference in between them. And when you have two BMSs that are smart BMSs, they could show you information on the screen, it's gonna drive you nuts. At this point, you cannot control this anymore because there's no device that I could find that could control two batteries in series and two in parallel. They kind of do their own thing. So the charge controller is pushing 26 volts, 27 volts, 28 volts, whatever. These need to be able to be charged. And there's always gonna be a slight discrepancy. Now here's where things get a little bit more complicated when you have also you're mixing in a system different brands. So ideally, even if you have 12 in series to 24, ideally you want to have exactly the same brand. But what if you have other batteries that were just laying around in the garage from before? Any manufacturer over there will say, you have to buy my brand, spend more money, get more stuff, therefore it's gonna be headache free. But what if these batteries cost $500 and you just don't wanna throw them away? To hook them up in series properly, by the manual, this is how you're supposed to do it. So you have the negative terminal over here, the positive terminal over here, and then you go around and you, you link them together. So then you have 12 volts in series and you make a 24 volt battery. And the same thing you do at the bottom batteries, this one and this one are completely different. They will have different charge and discharge rates, 12 volt, 100 amp hours. Sometimes the voltages differ a little bit. And this is where manufacturers recommend to do if you have the same exact brand. You take a lead from the negative of battery A and you put it on battery C, so negative to negative. You see a pigtail that I have over here, which I've tried. And then you have a positive from here to here. So what you do is that you connect the batteries, not just two rows in parallel, but also you connect and you link these two together and these two together. So what happens is that you have the positive and negative terminal from this battery connected to the positive and the terminal and the negative terminal of this battery and then therefore they stay in sync this way while they're in series. So this one will sync up with this one and this one will sync up with this one. Works great when you have same exact brand but they won't stay 100% in sync why is because again these are hooked up in series and sometimes they, they, they do 
drift away a little bit. So it's not a perfect system. As I said, the perfect system is to get a 48 volt or a 36 volt or a uh, 24 volt and that the battery management does all the measuring. So right now, I've taken the pigtail off. Because this is what happened when you mix batteries. And this is the part of the video that maybe you have waited for because you want to know what happens. So these ones are in sync. Drift away a little bit in voltage, but not too much. These ones are trying to sync each other up. Drift away in voltages a little bit. Not a big deal. But when I had the pigtail connected in between them, this one and this one, because they were linked, and this one and this one because they were linked, these had different kind of discharge rates. So therefore, this one was drifting away a lot and this one was like just sitting there because this one was providing more power than this one was providing. So therefore, they were influenced by the batteries at the bottom too much and they were drifting away from each other. Too. And I didn't like that because when you have smart BMSs, it tells you exactly how far they're drifting away as you can see uh, left and right over here. So when that happened, it, it absolutely drives you nuts. Usually when you have a pack like this and you don't have smart VMSs, you don't really know what's going on. So you kind of like think it's working, but it was driving me nuts. So I took the pigtail off, right? So I took the pigtail off. I removed the pigtail that was supposed to uh, create this link in between the batteries, which is a manual. Everywhere you look, it says you should have that. So what is happening right now? These two batteries are in sync. Slow drift in between them, but not too big. These batteries are connected with two pigtails coming out over here. They are in sync with this battery. So if this one is 26.6 volts, these will be 26.6 volts. This one does not control this one. This one does not control this one. So these will have their own drift, you know? So some of them will go a little bit more voltage and some of them will have a little bit less voltage, but they will make that 26.6 because they always balance each other. So the two cells, the two rows, balance each other. So what happens in the charge and discharge and charge and discharge after multiple cycles? Well, they drift away a little bit, but they kind of start to synchronize after a while. And this is where it's interesting where they're synchronizing. So even though these discharge faster than these, so first when I turn the system on, you can see that it's pulling a lot of amps from these and not that many amps from these. Later on in the day, once these reach around 60%, they start to slow down their discharge and these are starting to provide more power because they have more voltage, more power left in them. So they kind of like self-balance with these. They discharge slower until they get into the 20% and then they, they, they always try to equalize. So the, the, the two rows always try to equalize. With this pigtail that was linking the batteries together, the rows equalize instead of the batteries staying in sync and drifting away one from the other. And why is this better than it was before? Because when you have them linked like this in a series, and that's why I said in the beginning of the video, get a 24 volt, get a 48 volt if you can. So when you have them like this, you have to have a total voltage before the charge controller stops. So once you reach 28.8 volts, they stop. But here's the interesting part. Um, you could have 14 on one and 15.8 on the other. Now, obviously I'm exaggerating because they never really reach to 15.8 because this one will turn at 14.4. So when you have them linked like this, they will try to reach the 28.8. And as soon as one reaches 14.4, the BMS on it will say, cut off charge. As soon as the one of them cut off charge, the other one doesn't receive any current anymore. So it cannot balance because you have more, this BMS is turned off and therefore the, the linkage is broken in between the two of them. So at that point, they cannot equalize. And that's why I said it again in the video, get a 24 volt because then the BMS does the job. So they cannot equalize and you're gonna have a little bit of a difference in between the two of them. The difference is determined by the fact that when the first one reaches its full capacity and it turns off. And to complicate things even more, when you go down and you look at these things, then they do the same thing, right? So now you have, you could be adrift this way, you could be adrift that way. Here's the interesting part though. It's all about absorption. 
And a lot of people say that you have to have the, the, the wires completely equal because even if it's an inch longer, it changes the absorption of the battery. And it's true in theory. But what's happening right now, and this is very, very interesting, they do self-balance. And I'm very, very impressed how well they stay in the voltages that they were supposed to be. Very rarely I verify them because I'm, I'm very, very geeky, but I disconnect them all and then I just charge them with a normal charge controller and then reconnect them so I know they're in balance. But actually I don't have to. I very rarely find them very, very widely out of spec. And, and here's why this is happening. When this battery, it's reaching 13.9 volts and this one is 14.2. The absorption level of this battery, it's less than the absorption level of this battery. So in multiple charges and discharges, this battery and this battery will, this one will absorb less because it's almost full and this one will absorb more because it's almost, uh, because it's not full. And when this one is starting to do its last balancing, it feels like it's just throwing away some of the power because the extra power cannot go in here. The amps don't transfer that way. The voltages don't transfer that way. But this one has time to catch up because it only receives still like 12 volt-ish, you know, whatever it needs to charge. You cannot accept the extra power that this one gets. So the controller is still pushing that power, but this one is kind of like wasting it slowly while this one is getting balanced up. So they're always inching towards each other. They never go like 20%, 30%, unless it's broken. And the same thing is happening without this pigtail, as the manual recommends, with the rows. So this one is discharging first. This one is discharging after 60%. I can feel that these are catching on. And then towards when they get to the bottom, they kind of like it's a race of which one offers the lower voltage, offers the last amps. And then they just kind of like race towards, towards the bottom. And at one point, one of them is weaker, usually these, and they drop the, uh, the BMS. One of the BMSs stops and it says, well, that's it. I've reached my lower limit. I'm protecting the cells. As soon as the BMS stops, even if the other one has still juice in it, the other one stops too. So this entire row just gets disconnected from the, from the controller. What happens then is that these are still providing power, but they're providing power down and this would be a mess wakes up and it says, oh, oops, I have current, you know? So all of a sudden it's trying to charge and then these are providing more power. So it's kind of like pushing power down, wasting a little bit in transferring power in between the one and the other and also trying to provide the inverter. At that point, the voltages drop over here and this one is not able to provide power for this one. The BMS turns off. This doesn't get any power. The inverter sees that there's no more power and all of a sudden the entire thing stops and they wait for solar input for the power to come in so they could charge. And then the entire process starts all over again. So even though they're unbalanced when that happens because one can have more power than the other, they do a little bit of a balancing towards the bottom and they do a little bit of a balancing towards the top so they never really drift away too far unless, again, they're broken. So in conclusion for this video, can you mix them? And the conclusion is yes, you can. If you have these batteries, this is a thousand dollars worth of batteries, maybe more. If you have them laying around in the garage, these provide five kilowatts a day. Five kilowatts a day, it's a dollar. That's $30 in a month, that's $365 in a year. So in four years, they pay themselves basically. But instead of throwing them away, in four years you get $1,000 worth of stored power, even though it's not perfectly balanced and stuff like that. If I would start the system again, I would definitely go for a 24 volt battery that has its own BMS, just shove it in here, and that would have worked a lot better. But these were left over from different projects. Some of them were supposed to go into a motor van and the other one was supposed to power something else. And then I had them and then I bought these and then one thing led to another. The net gain, it's more than what I'm losing. Now, will that damage these better batteries, these older batteries, which are not that old, but just age-wise a little bit older? Well, these are very durable batteries. These cells, they have three to four to 5,000 cycles of charge. So even though people know from the old lead acid batteries that they sulfate and they create all kinds of issues and all that stuff, these don't really suffer from the same problem. So therefore, 
if you're asking the question, will these weaker batteries damage these batteries that are much better? No, because even though some might discharge, maybe they are only 95% capacity, or this one is actually a, a, a smaller packaging, I don't know if the cells are smaller, but it has a lot of power, it's still rated 12 volt, 100 amps. Even though linked like this, I'm still having a net gain. And if they last four years, then they're free. They, they pay themselves off. And then after that, they could last, you know, 5,000 cycles of charge, could be 10 years. So I hope this video helped and um, stay subscribed to the channel because I'm gonna bring you some updates. If you wanna see what's gonna happen uh, in the future, then there will be another video for that. Thanks for watching.